Effective environmental management is an important part of ensuring a sustainable Queensland pineapple industry. The Queensland Government's Healthy Waterways strategy is supporting the industry by enabling growers to trial new technologies and practices. Long-term viability of the pineapple industry is important to both the local and Queensland economy. Industry Development Officer Lana Baskerville explains. The pineapple industry is made up of about 80 growers. We farm about 3,000 hectares, stretching from Mareebra in North Queensland all the way down to this area in South East Queensland. The pineapple industry focuses on growing two major varieties. There's the smooth cane for the canning market and the golds, uh, which have been specially developed for the fresh market to be low acid and very sweet. Overall, the value of the pineapple industry to Australia is over $60 million. The pineapple industry has undergone several changes in recent years. Perhaps most notably, the change in focus from processed or canning to fresh fruit. Farming practices have also changed with a stronger focus on sustainability and natural resource management. Developing practices that are sustainable and economical is a challenge for growers. However, the industry is responding by trialling a range of new farm practices. Our major challenge as an industry is trying to manage pests and diseases, nutrients and soil in a way that is sustainable and profitable. The industry is tackling these challenges through our R&D program, which largely consists of individual growers doing on-farm trials. The Pike family is part of the Tropical Pines group. They operate a farm at Glasshouse Mountains on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. As third generation farmers who have grown pineapples in the region for almost a century, they've witnessed many changes to the industry and also to the sorts of practices used on farm. The knowledge and experience they have developed is invaluable and so their involvement in on-farm trials is very important in moving the industry forward. Murray Pike explains some of the challenges the industry faces and how it has evolved. We started here uh, almost 100 years ago, uh, my father, grandfather actually, my father was farming pineapple. Uh, I've been farming pineapple for 42 years, uh, my son's now third generation on the farm and we farm about 40 hectares of pineapple. It's quite interesting, we've seen lots of changes to the industry in the 40 years. Initially it was canning industry, these days it's uh, trended towards fresh. It's very interesting actually to see that how the industry has evolved. We've got some challenges uh, around you know, weather conditions. Um, recently we've had adverse weather, floods, droughts. Um, but yeah, I think the industry is quite strong. Uh, and moving forward in a good direction. Murray and his son Sam are currently undertaking two trials on their farm. The first of these trials is looking at the use of controlled release fertilisers. The use of controlled release fertiliser has the potential to avoid nitrogen losses due to leaching and runoff. When compared with traditional granular fertilisers, the use of controlled release fertilisers has shown that they can also increase nitrogen availability over a longer period of time. This in turn means that application rates can be reduced. Sam Pike explains the reasons why they are trialling controlled release fertilisers. You know, we mainly use foliar sprays with our fertiliser, but um, we're trialling a slow release due, you know, we're trying to reduce nutrient loss and, you know, trying to get it to stay where we put it. You know, we put up centre of the hill and, you know, we want it to stay there when these heavy downpours come, so, you know, that's the main reason why we're trialling this new slow release stuff. Another trial Murray and Sam are undertaking is the use of living mulch. Living mulch is a green cover crop that is typically grown in the interrow space. Oats, sorghum and millet are mainly used dependent on the season. The benefits of living mulch include suppression of weeds without the use of herbicide, protection of soil from water and wind erosion, increased organic matter, increased available nitrogen and water retention, and improvement in water root and air penetration to the soil. Uh, we're trying um, another practice known as living mulch. It's a sorghum cover crop we put in the bed after we plant. And the benefits of that are um, we lose less soil because the beds are very vulnerable for the first probably two or three months until we get you know, some sort of rain on them so they harden up. So it sort of covers them up for a bit and um, stops them washing down into our silt traps, which means you know we spend less money digging the silt traps out and carting it back up the paddock. So 
Yeah, it's a big win for us actually. It's probably the we've seen more benefit out of the living mulch than we have out of anything else that well since I've been back anyway, so. One of the implications of surface water runoff is the loss of soil and sediment. This can be a major problem on exposed soil surfaces, particularly in substantial rainfall events. Runoff can also cause loss of nutrients, herbicides and pesticides, which can end up in surrounding waterways. Cover crops provide protection to the soil from erosion caused by raindrop impact and also from rill erosion from concentrated flows. Some field trials have shown a reduction in soil loss of up to 78% in fields with living mulch compared to standard management practices. Um, we've got a block here at home that um, we've had over a metre of rain on that we planted living mulch on, the sorghum, and um, we've seen very little soil movement, which is um, a big benefit, you know, 1.2 metres of rain is a lot of water. The results from these trials on the Pikes Farm have important implications for the whole pineapple industry. Successful implementation of practices such as these on industry leading farms is an important first step towards wider understanding and adoption. The growing involvement of young people within the pineapple industry, such as Murray's son Sam, is a very positive sign. Backed by the skills and knowledge being passed on to them, these young farmers are well placed to take on the changes and challenges that lie ahead. We've got a lot of young growers coming coming into the industry today and, and they're looking to change things and do things differently. Um, they're obviously more aware of the environmental issues that uh, the younger generation, it's, it's, it's out there, the things they have to deal with. And farmers need to be progressive and need to change. Um, nothing stays the same in agriculture. And I'd expect that these younger chaps will be better farmers than, than their fathers. So, um, yeah, it's all good. In the coming years, the next generation of farmers will be the ones who implement and further improve on-farm practices such as these to ensure the sustainability of this iconic industry. Music